They're trying to silence me because I know about the satanic secret societies of the TDC Shadow Government E-System. They told me they were going to kill me unless I stopped preaching my mystic gospel. These are the words of Raymond Riles, a man who spent 45 years on death row. Raymond Riles committed an atrocious murder, but some argue the way he was treated by the state is almost as awful and illegitimate. This is his story on death row. What we now know to be mental illness was then largely considered mere strangeness. But soon enough, Riles' odd behavior turned into something far more sinister and dangerous. Raymond Riles was born on the 1st of June, 1950 in Harris County, Texas. Not much is known about his childhood or general background. What we do know, however, is that Riles only completed seven years of education and later went on to work as a truck driver. His criminal record began when he was a juvenile and it included everything from burglary, robbery, and even attempted rape. Riles was a violent man, one who instilled fear in those around him. Once, during one of his episodes, he tried to tie his own wife to a railroad track as a train neared while calling her Jezebel and yelling at her to repent for crimes unknown. So nobody that knew Riles was really taken by surprise by the events that landed him straight on death row. It was December 11th, 1974, when 25-year-old Raymond Riles and his friend Herbert Washington showed up to John Henry Motors, a used car dealership in Houston. Riles and Washington weren't there to buy a car. They just wanted to have a word or two with John Henry, the dealership's owner. Washington had bought a car from John Henry a while before, but the vehicle turned out to be rather disappointing. The car had many problems, and Riles and Washington felt they'd been swindled by 31-year-old John Henry. Unbeknownst to Henry, both Riles and Washington were armed with guns. Riles and Washington approached Henry. It was obvious they meant business, but Henry had yet to discover just how awfully serious they were about the whole deal. The two demanded a refund of the down payment. Unfortunately, Henry wasn't aware of the real danger lurking, waiting to snatch him. Henry didn't want to refund the money, but he had another proposition. He would repair the car, all free of charge. But his generous offer wasn't enough, not to these particular people. Raymond Riles pushed Henry and drew his gun, shooting the man from behind. After the deed was done, an unfazed Washington and a probably even more unfazed Riles went to a local restaurant to inquire about job openings. But the manager refused to give the man job applications. This proved to be a mistake. Riles and Washington were furious. They took their guns out and robbed the manager and his wife at gunpoint before leaving with around $1,800 in cash. After they left, the manager called the police and provided a description of the robbers, which ultimately led to their arrest. As you can imagine, Riles and Washington had no intention of getting arrested. A frantic police chase ensued at speeds of up to 100 miles per hour, but it wasn't too long until Washington crashed the car into a truck. The men whipped out their guns and exchanged gunfire with the police before running away on foot. As they were running, Washington was shot in the hand. This slowed him down considerably, giving officers the time to apprehend him. Riles never once looked back, nor did he stop when his arm was wounded too. Instead, the 25-year-old entered a nearby home, hoping to at least get a respite. He was probably sure he could easily subdue the owner of the house, but that's exactly where his luck ran out. The owner of the house turned out to be a police officer, who managed to place a tourniquet on Riles' arm and held him down until help arrived. Riles and Washington were apprehended the same day, but from here, their stories differ dramatically. Washington was initially sent on death row, but he wasn't the one to commit the murder, so his conviction was later thrown out. He was then sentenced to 50 years in jail for the part he played in the gunfire exchange, but Washington was granted parole in 1983, nine years after that fateful day in December 1974. But there was no doubt who had pulled the trigger. Raymond Riles stood trial for the murder, and nothing his lawyer said in his defense was enough to change his sentence. Once Riles' trial started, it was more than obvious that the man wasn't mentally sane. Riles had multiple outbursts during the trial. He broke things, yelled at the judge and prosecution team, and even tried to attack the judge. Expert witnesses testified Riles was completely mentally ill. According to their expertise, Riles had delusions, psychotic thoughts, and most likely suffered from schizophrenia. The medical history of Riles' family was also deemed relevant. Many members of his family had been committed to mental health facilities over the years. 
A psychiatrist testified Riles acted like a dog when she tried to interview him. Despite this glaring evidence that Raymond Riles was mentally ill, the prosecutor chose to believe it was all an act on Riles' part, the man's desperate attempt to escape the capital punishment. The court seemed to agree. They even claimed it didn't matter that Riles was mentally ill. If anything, that was reason enough to have him sent on death row, where he would no longer be a threat to society. Riles was convicted of capital murder and sentenced to death in 1976. His first conviction and death sentence were later overturned on appeal because prosecutors had used evidence from the restaurant armed robbery at Riles' murder trial. But the matter was settled in 1978, and Riles was sent back on death row in no time. He was one of 10 death row inmates who signed a petition, declaring their intention to stop pursuing further appeals and asking to be executed as soon as possible. Perhaps Riles believed the authorities didn't move fast enough, or perhaps he had a deal with the voices inside his head. It was May 20th, 1985, when other inmates saw Riles talking to himself, eating grass, rolling in the dirt, and trying to communicate with Mother Earth and Allah while he was in the recreation yard. The next day, Riles surrounded himself with piles of papers, Bibles, and other books and lit a match. He wanted to go, and fire was as good a way as any other. But his suicide attempt was unsuccessful. Riles was found just in time, and he was rushed to the hospital with severe burns on 30% of his body. In 1986, the Supreme Court declared that states may not execute people who did not understand why they were being executed, people that should be legally classified as incompetent. But despite the fact that Riles was obviously mentally unstable, and even medication did little to help him, this new ruling was overlooked in his case. He was scheduled to die by lethal injection on September 17, 1986, and for the first time, it looked like the state was serious about it. The Supreme Court ruled that, despite the glaring evidence Raymond Riles was mentally ill, the execution would go ahead. And it probably would have happened, were it not for a separate claim from Riles' attorneys that black men with white victims were disproportionately sentenced to death. Riles' execution was stayed two hours before it should have taken place. Riles had another execution date in 1988, but it never happened. It was the last execution date Riles ever received. Years of isolation turned Riles' mental health for the worse, but not all officials believed in the severity of the inmate's condition. Riles' attorneys decided to petition the courts for a new sentence. They claimed that potential mitigation factors such as Riles' mental illness had been overlooked during his initial trial. In February 2021, Harris County District Attorney Kim Ogg expressed her support to Riles' case. Ogg explained that certain factors must be considered before a defendant is sentenced. Furthermore, she said, Raymond Riles deserved to be treated the same way defendants who are being sentenced today are. Riles' resentencing hearing took place on June 9, 2021. He appeared on Zoom and not in person due to his poor health. Riles suffered from heart disease and prostate cancer, which put him at high risk of contracting COVID-19. State District Judge Anna Martinez resentenced Raymond Riles to life in prison. At the time of Riles' sentencing, Texas did not give terms of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Raymond Riles spent 45 years on death row, making him the nation's longest serving death row prisoner. He's currently 72 years old and still in prison. The Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles is expected to conduct a parole review in his case.